Hi there! A couple of years ago, I made a full house filming location video. And in the comments section, some people said, you should make a video for Fuller House. So, let's do that. But first, I need to watch the series, so I'm gonna binge watch it right now. Okay, I just binged the whole series. That took longer than I thought. I found some locations. Let's go off to San Francisco. One of the shots that you'll see in all five seasons is this shot of Chinatown. This is where DJ Fuller and Dr. Mark Harmon have their veterinary practice. And no, I'm not wearing this mask because I want to be a veterinarian. I'm wearing it, of course, because of the coronavirus. They changed this green sign to say Harmon Pet Care, and then this yellow and red awning, they changed that also to say Harmon Pet Care. So if you look at it from the opposite side of the street, you can see just how big Fuller and Harmon Pet Care is. It stretches from what is the Far East Cafe all the way to right here. In the eighth episode of season one, they gave us another view of Fuller and Harmon Pet Care, but from the opposite side of the street looking down. This is the best angle I could get with the lens that I have. This is also the only nighttime shot of Harmon Pet Care. For some odd reason, for the 13th episode, they used a different building for Fuller and Hammer and Pet Care. It's a couple blocks away. Let's go check it out. Chinatown is definitely not some place I'd want to have my veterinary business. One, it's crowded, parking's horrendous, and it's definitely not some place I'd want to take my cat. I'm kidding. I love Chinatown. Further ado, we officially open Harmon Fuller Pet Care! Where it says BNC Laundromat, they changed that sign to say Harmon Pet Care. Then they added a yellow and red awning about Harmon Pet Care. Then this green sign here, they removed all that Chinese writing and just made it green. The next location is Van Atta Middle School, named after Full House executive producer Don Van Atta. Now I was having a really hard time finding this, but after a little bit of digging, I realized they just bought stock footage off of Shutterstock. This school is actually Chatsworth Avenue Elementary School in New York. And this theater, as seen in episode six, is not in California. This is the Riviera Theater in Chicago. In fact, all of the beautiful San Francisco shots are stock footage. I even went back and found the shot of Chinatown. So am I doing Fuller House locations or Shutterstock locations? Then, out of nowhere, for the 10th episode of season one, they brought the whole cast here to the San Francisco Giants home, Oracle Park. The crew even shot their own B-roll like this statue of Willie Mays, the Say Hey Kid. The story is he's called the Say Hey Kid because a sports writer on the East Coast heard him say, say what, say who, say where, say hey, and that got him the nickname, the Say Hey Kid. All I know is the Say Hey Principal is this guy. Hey, 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 what is going on? But that's another show. Let's continue on with Fuller House. When this park first opened, it was originally called Pac Bell Park. That lasted for about 10 years. Then they changed the name to AT&T Park. That's when they were filming Full House here. Now it's called Oracle Park. It's been called that for about two years. I can see my mom 
mom's car getting a parking ticket. I told her it wasn't a space. Here's where DJ's son Jackson and his girlfriend were sitting in Wright Field, and just across the bay is the parking lot. The main storyline in this episode is that Stephanie is dating Pence. No, not that Pence. She's dating Hunter Pence, one of the baseball players. And the Full House crew really did film scenes during a real Giants versus Dodgers game. This person says on Twitter, they're filming Fuller House scenes between innings. The players do not seem happy. Another person says, they're filming for Fuller House today and we got to boo Stephanie Tanner. And this person says, at the San Francisco Giants game and they're filming a Fuller House episode. Stephanie Tanner just saying, take me out to the ball game. Most of the scenes were shot inside the Giants stadium, which I do not have access to. But they filmed a couple of scenes outside the stadium. Stephanie and Kimmy get escorted right out that gate. They walk right over the plaque that commemorates Barry Bonds' 600th home run that he hit on August 9th of 2002, back when it was called Pac Bell Park. Hit me a home run, Pensy! Okay, let's go home. <laughs> In this season two scene, Andrea Barber and Jody Sweeten sneak into a limousine right here. They basically carjack it. They bust into the limousine, they take the driver's phone and throw it out the window, then lock him out. This scene wasn't actually filmed here. This is just really elaborate green screen. Now inside the limousine is the new kids on the block. The limousine was parked right here in the middle lane. And then they digitally altered this sign and removed where it says Condor Club and made it say Connor. And if you notice at the very bottom of the club, it says Topless. Which they also digitally erased. Yep, it's a Topless Club. A go-go. I probably look like a pervert filming this sign right now. Let's get out of here. Speaking of Fuller House and Jody Sweeten, she's really developed into a fine actress. What did you think I was gonna say? Get your head out of the gutter. The buildings behind the new kids looking through the windows, they're not the buildings at the corner of Broadway and Columbus. They're actually down the road a little ways. So when the new kids are in the limousine, this is the view behind them. You'll see this black building. It is a Italian restaurant, some kind of a pizza parlor. And you'll also see this blue sign right here. I can't believe they went for that. I can. Jordan has a thing for me. Um, no, I don't.
In season three, episode 17, they brought some of the cast here to walk down the iconic steps right out of the house, right here on Broderick Street in San Francisco. And surprisingly, there's hardly any tourists here today. I was gonna yell coronavirus to see if I can make them scatter. So DJ, Kimmy, Jesse, Joey, and Danny, and Stephanie, they all walk down these steps into a red car. No, I wasn't there on the very first day, but can I come anyway? Well, since you're already in the car, but we have a choice. Kimmy played the role of Michelle since Michelle never showed up for the series. And they got into the car right here, looking right up Broderick Road this way. How come this song comes on every time we drive around the city? I don't know. Now as they leave, you see them go down the road here, and they digitally put in downtown San Francisco. Whatever happens, predictability. In real life, downtown San Francisco is way off that way. The Transamerica building and all downtowns that way, but they put it in this way, just to let, I guess, everybody know, hey, we're in San Francisco. I cannot believe it, I'm here all alone. I guess, when you're lost out there and you're all alone, life is waiting to carry you home. In season three, episode 10, they sent the cast to Japan and we get to see them cross the busy Shibuya Crossing. They also filmed a bit at Senryo Puryo Land, also known as Hello Kitty Land. They went to a few other locations, but I'm not anywhere near Japan or gonna be there anytime soon. So I'll let you find those on your own. In season three, episode four, they used stock footage of Pier 39 and digitally altered this building to say laser tag. In real life, this is a hat store called Lids. Some interesting season four stock footage is Mucho Marcos, where Stephanie performs at a birthday party, is actually Chipotle in Massachusetts. And the building used for Wake Up San Francisco is actually a building in Germany. Maybe they should have called it Wake Up Hamburg. Wake, Wake up, up San Francisco. Francisco. In all five seasons, you'll see this shot of the painted ladies. I can't get to the exact spot because it is very, very crowded here today. But everybody's social distancing. Now Lori Loughlin is only in the first four seasons of Fuller House because of the college admission scandal that her and her husband partook in. And in August, they will be sentenced and receive their punishment. But they <laughs> This episode did not age well. Lori Loughlin lost her role on Fuller House, she lost her role on When Calls the Heart, and she lost some other Hallmark movies. She's pretty much been canceled. In 30 years, I have never missed a show. My career means everything to me. Yes, but nothing compared to being the world's greatest mom, right, honey? <laughs> oh yeah, that too. This is rich with irony. <laughs> but isn't the real scandal the price of college and the price of college textbooks? But I think, hey, everybody deserves a comeback. And everybody loves a good comeback story. And I think it's time for Lori Loughlin to come back. Free Lori! Season five has a lot of stock aerial footage, which is really hard to recreate without a drone. But there is one place we can go. to advance French cooking for couples.
This is where DJ and Steve go to cooking school. Now in the show, they digitally altered the sign to say cooking school, a pretty generic name. In real life, this is a cheese school. Not sure what that means. In season five, episode 12, leaves another shot of the corner of Columbus and Broadway, but this time they do not alter the Condor Club at all. And if you squint, you can even see where it says topless. I was really hoping that this diner, seen in season five, episode 17, was at least in San Francisco or somewhere near me, but this is stock footage of a diner in New Hampshire. And if you were curious, 99% of the show was filmed right here at stage 24 on the Warner Brothers lot. What is now called the Friend Stage because this is where the majority of the show Friends was filmed. This was on the Warner Brothers tour and you're not allowed to take pictures inside the studio. So these pictures that I have are from Pinterest. But I did spend six hours on this soundstage back in 1997 when I saw an episode of Friends being filmed. So if you watch season three, episode 12, the one with all the jealousy, you might hear my laugh. He paints quite a picture, doesn't he? <laughs> okay, I am back from San Francisco. So, let me give you my thoughts on Fuller House. One, I really enjoyed it. It's super family friendly, and it seems like a direct continuation of Full House. I mean, the sets look exactly the same as the original Full House. Check out this old picture I found. I sent away for it circa 1994, and if I remember right, I had to collect like 25 Kit Kat wrappers and send in like 395, and then they would send you a autographed picture of the Full House cast. I can't tell if these autographs are real or if it's just a print. Either way, it's pretty cool. Check it out, there's Lori Loughlin, so young, so innocent. And there's Mary Kate. Ashley Olsen wasn't in this photo. And that's a real bummer about Fuller House is that Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, they'd never made an appearance. Not even one of them came. And I know they're not actresses anymore and they have their kind of fashion empire, but they would not have that fashion empire without Full House. And we're so fortunate that we're all here together and we're healthy. We miss Michelle. We hope that she'll be with us next year. Come, it'll be fun. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed these filming locations. I know they're not as exciting as last time because they're mainly stock footage, but I thank you for watching. Please hit like if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you loved it. And until then, I'll see you next time. She Wolf Howl. <laughs>